Hello everyone, my name is Jesus Xiao, postdoc at UT Austin. Today I would like to talk about our ICRA 2021 paper, Agile Robot Navigation Through Hallucinating Learning and Server Deployment. This paper is joint work with Bolio and Peter Stone from UT Austin and Sony AI. First of all, I would like to share with you our recent survey paper on using machine learning for motion control in mobile robot navigation. This is a simplified version of a figure from the survey. Let me walk you through this still quite complicated figure to see how roboticists have used machine learning for motion control in mobile robot navigation. At the bottom, you can see a breakdown of classical navigation systems horizontally from left to right. It starts with a global planning subsystem, which takes in a global goal and perception and produces a local goal. There is also the local planner, which takes local goal from the global planner and produces raw motor commands to move the robot. At the top, we show the scope of learning of each paper within the classical pipeline. So in the horizontal direction, the width of each block represents what classical components at the bottom each of these learning approaches encompasses. I didn't show the 72 specific papers we surveyed, but the list the number of papers belong to each block, and the shade of each block represents the number of papers. Darker blocks mean more papers are targeting at the classical components covered by this block. A vast majority of work approach navigation from an end-to-end -end manner. On the subsystem level, a small amount of work learned the global planning, or local planning subsystem. On the component level, there are some work in learning global representation, a very small amount of work on learning global planet's parameters, learning local representations, or learning local planet's parameters. With all these learning approaches, you may wonder how well do they work? What are their navigation performance? So we compare the navigation performance of these learning methods to their classical counterparts. The x-axis is the scope of learning we saw in the last slide, in three course categories end-to-end -end learning, learning subsystems, and learning components. The scope decreases towards right. We further organize all these learning papers along a different dimension. The y-axis is the navigation performance compared to classical approaches, including underperformed classical, duplicate classical, and improved classical, so better performance towards up. As you can see, there is a significant concentration of works at the lower left corner. These works are end-to-end -end learning and can at most duplicate what is already achievable by their classical counterparts. Many of them are even worse. You can also see a rough correlation between decreased learning scope and increased performance. So the more focused the learning approach is, the better the overall performance it can achieve compared to classical approaches. This hallucinated learning and super deployment work uses machine learning in the local planning subsystem level and aims at largely improving classical navigation planners. The motivation for the learning from hallucination or LFH framework is highly constrained environments where the robots need to engage in agile maneuvers to squeeze between obstacles. A contrast between a representative normal cluttered environment existing mobile robot navigation approaches have addressed versus the highly constrained environment the LFH framework is designed for. Those places will cause trouble for classical motion planners because they will require increased computation. Sampling-based method will need more samples, while trajectory optimization method will require more optimization iterations. However, learning-based methods do not make things easier either. For imitation learning, demonstration is difficult to acquire in those highly constrained spaces. And for reinforced learning, try and error is even more expensive due to the high probability of a collision with those highly constrained spaces. LFH's inspiration is that robots can comfortably perform a variety of agile maneuvers in open spaces. Those maneuvers in open spaces can be optimal for certain highly constrained environments. By generating or hallucinating those spaces, we can acquire many training data. Today, I'm going to talk about the hallucination method on the right to hallucinate a minimal enrichable set to make a motion plan collected in open space optimal. We have presented the other method on the left to hallucinate the most constrained enrichable set during a Tuesday session. First, the learning from hallucination framework adopts some common notations in motion planning. We are dealing with the configuration space C composed of obstacle C obstacle and free spaces C free. The robot locates at the current configuration CC and want to go to the goal configuration CG. The robot can take action U at each time step, such as linear and angular velocities. A sequence of actions comprises a motion plan P. A motion planner is basically a function F that maps from obstacle configuration to an optimal motion plan, given current and goal configuration. The motion planning problem is to find that function f. In this LFH work, we propose to investigate the inverse function of f. So given an optimal plan p, what is the obstacle configuration c obstacle? Our key observation is that 
finding the optimal motion plan from a variety of obstacle configurations is difficult. But finding an appropriate obstacle configuration from an optimal motion plan is much easier. Unfortunately, this inverse function is not well defined because multiple obstacle sets can map to the same optimal motion plan, as you can see on the right. To address this problem, previous work proposes to hallucinate one special unreachable set called the most constrained unreachable set, C obstacle star. The idea is to find the unique maximum or we call most constrained obstacle set, which makes the motion plan executed in open space optimal. We presented this approach in a Tuesday session. Feel free to check out that paper as well. However, the downside of this approach is during deployment, because in order to match the deployment scenario with training obstacle distributions, it requires a coarse global path to help generate the most constrained runtime hallucination. Therefore, the most constrained hallucination approach will work only with specific global planners and waste a lot of computation to generate a runtime hallucination. Furthermore, always hallucinating the most constrained unreachable set will lead to a very conservative planner, which fails to adapt to the realistic deployment scenarios, especially when the realistic scenarios is very open. In this work, we relax these two assumptions by a method called hallucinating the learning and sober deployment, or HLSD. In HLSD, instead of the most constrained obstacle set, we define a minimal obstacle set. For a minimal unreachable set C obstacle min, for any single obstacle configuration C in C obstacle min, removing it from this set will cause a different optimal plan. I will use a point mass holonomic robot which follows the shortest path principle as an example. Let's look at this graphical illustration. Assuming the robot locates at CC and wants to go to CG, instead of a straight line, which is obviously the shortest path, it actually takes a detour through CM. Why is CC, CM, CG the optimal path instead of the straight line CC, CG? It is because of some obstacles. One example obstacle set is shown as the black line. It starts from CM and ends at some point CE. Apparently, it blocks the shortest straight line path CCCG. But you also need to make sure there is no other shorter path than CCCMCG. So on the other side, you will need CE to locate on the ellipse whose focal points are CC and CG. So CCCCG has the same length as CCCMCG per definition of an ellipse. As you can see, if you drop any of the obstacles on the black line, such as this arbitrarily chosen C, CC, CM, CG are not an optimal path to go from CC to CG anymore. You can actually go through that dropped obstacle C and have a shorter path. So you cannot drop any obstacles on this black line, and therefore it is a minimal unreachable set. Unfortunately, there are many other minimal unreachable sets as well. These are just some examples, but fortunately, we can prove that the set of all minimal unusual sets is the gray area, composed of a half ellipse and a triangle. You can find a detailed proof in the paper, but the main point is, if the gray area is small enough, we can probably just use one representative minimal obstacle set to represent all of them. Say, let's use the straight line CM, CM prime shown in figure D to represent all black lines. CM prime is the symmetrical point of CM with respect to CCCG. We will show empirically this approximation works well in the experiment. Everything I have shown so far is for point mass holonomic robot. You may wonder how did this work for non-holonomic robot with a footprint, a real footprint. To deal with a realistic non-holonomic robot, we apply similar reasoning from the last slide to consecutive configurations collected in open space. The red dotted lines represent the CCCM CGCM prime polygon in the last slide. And we use the black straight lines CM, CM prime to approximate the minimal obstacle set. We call them C obstacle mean bar. So these black lines are the configurations which must be obstacles. For other configurations, as they can be obstacle or they can be free, as long as they are not within the area where the robot footprint swept through, defined by the blue boundary. To instantiate C obstacle, we use ray casting for laser range readings. The blue boundary and the black minimal unreachable set gives us a minimal and a maximal reading of each beam, shown in orange and yellow. And every value between these main and the max values still makes the red motion plan optimal. Therefore, we can simply sample many times between the main and the max values to generate many C obstacles as training data. These blue crosses are only one example of a sample scan. We can use some heuristics to simulate the continuity of real-world obstacles for the sampling. 
But more importantly, we can account uncertainty here during learning in contrast to during deployment in the most constrained case in the original LFH work. For example, for faster motions with higher uncertainty, the sampling can be biased towards the maximal value, while for slower, more accurate motion, we expect the robot to be moving in very confined space and bias the sampling towards the minimal value. We also implemented the edge edge HRSD on a jackal robot, both in simulation and in physical in environment. For the original most constrained hallucination, we used a random exploration data set with 0.4 meter per second max velocity, with very low variance on the linear velocity. Since we can deal with different speeds and uncertainty with HRSD during learning now, we collected another data set with max velocity to be 1.0 meter per second and a very large variance. We compared the default DWA and HRSD and, HR and LFH trained by both 0.4 and 1.0 data set and deploy all five of them in this obstacle course. Note LFH requires a course global pass, while HRSD only requires a single sub goal from the global planner. DWA gets stuck in many places due to the higher obstacle density, while LFH 0.4 and HRSD 0.4 perform similarly. LFH 1.0 is the worst, didn't even finish a single trial due to multiple collisions because always hallucinating the most constrained obstacle sets with varying linear velocity in the 1.0 data set causes ambiguity and confuses the learner. Our HRSD 1.0 simply queries a pre-trained neural net without the need to generate a runtime hallucination and therefore performs the best with smallest every traversal time and standard deviation. A video of HRSD being deployed in a natural environment. We tested HRSD in our benchmark autonomous robot navigation or barn data set with 300 randomly generated navigation environments by cellular automata. We ordered the 300 environments based on DWA traversal time, the easier um, environments on the left and the more difficult ones on the right. HRSD 1.0 achieved the best traversal time and the performance is not very sensitive to the environment difficulty as shown by the flat green line. LFH 0.4 showing magenta and HRSD 0.4 showing cyan performed similarly while LFH 1.0 gets confused due to ambiguity, so the red dots are scattered all over the graph. In conclusion, HRSD allows absolutely safe learning in obstacle-free spaces during training. In comparison to imitation learning and reinforced learning, both of which are difficult in highly constrained spaces, the LFH framework is much safer and more sample efficient. During deployment, LFH framework can enable agile navigation in highly constrained spaces without the increased computational overhead of classical sampling-based and optimization-based methods. Compared to the original LFH work, the HRSD work in, in, in this paper does not require a course global pass and online hallucination to match deployment scenarios with training distribution, but simply reacts to the realistic obstacle configuration during runtime. For future work, one interesting direction is to eliminate the need of handcrafting a hallucination function, such as the most constrained and minimal hallucination, but to use learning to learn a hallucination function in a self-supervised manner. While the current hallucination approaches all look at static obstacles, how to address dynamic obstacles also need to be investigated. With this, I conclude my talk, and I'm happy to take any questions from the audiences.